<laughs> well, well, let me tell you about that. It was perhaps the most exquisite day of my life. <sighs> I've never had one better. What's up, YouTube? Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Today, we're going to be jumping into that GPT Sovitz update that I did for real-time um, voice conversion with the uh, the tool. And I'm just going to be going everything that I did. All right, first things first. Let me show you the working product. I'm going to launch the script here, and we'll just get it up and going for inference. So give it a couple of seconds to boot up, load some models. All righty, and now it says go. So... I'm going to paste in this text here. The first generation takes a little bit longer, but um, I'm just going to play it through. <laughs> well, well, let me tell you about that. It was perhaps the most exquisite day of my life. <sighs> I've never had one better. All right, so that's the first sample through. It's... um. Always takes a little bit longer on the first one because it has to convert the reference audio. But once the reference audio has been loaded in and encoded, um, we are now good to go. So this next sentence, the first speech token will probably come out in less than a second. So here we go. <laughs> well, well, let me tell you about that. It was perhaps the most exquisite day of my life. <sighs> I've never had one better. So there you go, and we can scroll back up, and the um, time to speech was half a second. So that is fantastic. It comes out almost instantly. However, you may have noticed that there is a little bit of an issue where you can hear um, where the chunks are being, or I guess just kind of like a choppiness, and that is because the chunks are being appended um, one after the other inside of some type of queue and I'm still working through that issue right now and I'm running into um, some troubles with that so I'll talk about that a little bit later but uh, we can also just change the sentence real quick so let me grab some great Gatsby and do this and you'll see that even if I change the sentence the inference speed is going to stay the same so we're gonna put that in there and then click enter he didn't say anymore but we've always been unusually communicative in our reserved way, and I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, I'm inclined to reserve all judgments, a habit that has opened up many curious natures to me and also made me the victim of not a few veteran bores. All right, so there you go. It works. Um, that uh, real-time speech is achievable. However, there is uh, that little choppiness that is heard inside of the speech, and that is the biggest trouble that I'm running into right now, and, and like I said, I'm going to go over that. But first, let's just run through how did I do this, and how did I even get started with, with modifying GPT Sovit. So, to give you some insight, is going to be some insight into my chat GPT log. So we're going to go through some of the conversations that I had with chat GPT, just to get the ground, um, just to get the ball rolling on this project. First, I identified where in the code uh, the inference was being um, called from and that is this run function here and the easiest way that I do that is that I just run the code and I step through it and that's where I find out that it's uh, that some type of run function and I usually do that by just finding working code in the repository first breaking that down and then yeah so did that just to kind of help me understand how this function is working and got some inputs back um, and now I'm starting to formulate kind of how I want to go through and modify and build this kind of how I see how it might be possible. So now I wanted to ask if it would be able to be streamed. And I don't think it gave me a satisfactory answer here. It kind of just read what was in the code. I kind of knew that I would have to give the direction to ChatGPT. It's not going to figure it out for me in this case. And so I started doing a little bit more investigation. So figuring out which part of the code is taking the longest. So manually timing some of this. And I found the section that took the longest. And so now my thought process for this is, well, now we've got to figure out how we can make that faster, how we can break that down and get some streaming in there. So let's scroll down a little bit more. So the next thing I needed to do was to make an inference script. So um, I asked it if it could make me an inference script based on the code that it gave me um, because I didn't want to write one myself. And so it ended up giving me a CLI um, function and I kind of braid it a little bit here and then it gives me a, a part of the code that uh, I can actually run with. So I went with that one. And then now I'm starting to formulate how I kind of want to prompt it to uh, help me think through this. So this is where I say I have an idea for how I'd like to test to see if Vitz models work fine on chunks. 
and then I give it the function that generates the chunks and note that it returns back Y, which in this case is some type of tensor. And that tensor contains all of the acoustic tokens that need to be decoded by the VITS model. And so it gives me some code and kind of helps me see if I can modify the text-to-speech.py, which is the function that um, calls the inference and that has that run function and helps me to split some of these tokens into chunks. So, so I use some of the code that it gives me and then I get an error where it's uh, this data type is wrong. So um, it corrects the data type. And then after this, I uh, was able to prove that my proof of concept does in fact work. So I can process these uh, tokens through VITs in chunks. And if I combine those, it'll create a coherent chunk. So let me show you that inside of the code here, what I mean by that. So we're going to change this function here to just run. And I did, I kept that modification inside of here just to show you guys it in order to give you guys a better idea of what I mean by that. So I'm going to delete this overlap here. Don't want that. And we're going to rerun this. So I'm going to actually push, put something here so that I can enter, exit the script without it crashing on me. And then we're going to click run or F5 to start running the code. And then let me copy this here so that we can inference on it. All right, so I'm going to enter that in here. And what this is going to do, it's going to generate the entire output. So it's going to uh, do all of the inference for the um, TTS output first. And so that tensor, uh, we are splitting it into five different chunks and each chunk we are decoding with VITs. And and then we're saving it. So here we are in this, um, you can see inside of the file browser here, we've got five different chunks and then we can take a listen to them. So this is how I wanted to first discover to see if we could split up the tensors into chunks. If we could, then we can start learning how to figure out how to stream the chunks or the tokens. And if this process didn't work, I wouldn't proceed anymore as I would probably be uh, wasting time as the architecture doesn't support streaming. But um, let's take a listen to these chunks in sequential order. <laughs> oh, well, let me tell you about that. It was perhaps the most exquisite day of my life. Phew, I've never had one better. And so there you go. If we play those five chunks um, sequentially, formulates a full sentence. And then, you know, you do something like this in Audacity where um, I just append them together. And then let's just play this real quick. <laughs> well, well, let me tell you about that. He was perhaps the most exquisite day of my life. See you. I've never had one better. Alrighty. So there you go. If we concatenate all of them and kind of overlap them and put them into um, or just play them sequentially, it creates a full sentence. And you might have noticed that it does sound a little bit different at like these areas. There are some overlaps and that's what I was playing with a little bit later because of uh, another thought process that I was thinking through. But the proof of concept was proven. We can take the tokens that are being um, processed, chunk them, and then process those chunks in VITs while the other tokens are being generated, which is how we ended up with the generation model. So yeah, after I proved that I worked with ChatGPT to help me make this generator function so that we can um, get those tokens um, processed in chunks. And so if we just modify this once again to go into um, run generator, that is what is happening here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to step through the code so that you can get a better idea on what is happening. So here we are going to put a breakpoint there and then we are going to run the code already. So I'm going to run this and then it's going to run until that first breakpoint. So here you can see it generated 27 tokens first and now that those tokens have been chunked into a piece that I want to process. And so we can continue running until the next breakpoint which will read this part of the sentence out first. So there's that first chunk. We'll run once more. Well. And then we'll do it one more time. Well, let. 
And then if we just continue a couple, a few more times, um, it'll read out the entire sentence. So there are a couple of issues with this implementation. So the streaming works, but there it, you can hear a little bit of choppiness inside of the text. And that's because the tokens are being uh, processed in chunks and those chunks are being put into some type of, um, queue one after the other. And it's similar to, uh, let's say you just have like a Hershey's chocolate bar, for example, and then you split it up into the chunks and then you put those chunks side by side to formulate that chocolate bar once again. Um, it's kind of the same thing here. We are just splitting the entire bar into tiny chunks that we can put back together and would make the entire um bar again, so to speak. But what's happening at those chunks, we have a little bit of... Um, I guess like peaking a little bit of choppiness. I'm not too sure exactly what is causing it. Um, my assumption is that when we are processing these tokens, um, the speech we're missing some part of the speech or that when we're processing these tokens in chunks, it does in fact variate a little bit uh, from say if we just did the entire sentence. So doing it in chunks makes it sound a little bit different, which might be causing this. So I'm trying to think of a way to to do this. Um, there are a few implementations that I'm playing around with right now. One is a buffering. And so I'm trying to see if uh, buffering would be possible. And the way that I'm thinking about this is that if I overlap some of the tokens from the subsequent um, audio files, then I can have some type of crossfading uh, between the previous streams of audio that are playing and then just overlap them, which is kind of what I was playing around with in Audacity here, which is why at this area you hear kind of an overlap. Let's play that. Let me tell you about that. He was so that overlap right there um, was kind of just a proof of concept to see if I can overlap these audio samples and uh, have them sound the same. So I'm still working through this. If anyone's done this before um, and has any ideas, please let me know. That would be great. But currently working through this buffer um, to see if this would work. I'm kind of under the impression that it's not going to work too well because um, I think when I'm chunking these audio samples, they are a little bit different than if I just tried to infer across all of the tokens as one complete tensor. Um, now, one other thing that I can do uh, that doesn't require me to have some type of buffer and some type of buffer that I modify uh, due to these overlaps would be to just increase the accumulation amount here. So if I increase this to something like 100, and we go ahead and go back into the inference script. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to wait a little longer to accumulate more tokens to return back. So in this case, it's going to return uh, 100 tokens back from the, from the GPT model generating, and then it'll just process those. And so there'll be less cuts in the audio. And so this might be uh, something that I can go with because it's it doesn't increase too much delay. Hey, let's listen to this real quick. So the first one just finished and I'm going to show you guys the second because that's going to give a more accurate um, analysis of the time to speech for the first sample. So let's go ahead and run that. <laughs> well, well, let me tell you about that. It was perhaps the most exquisite day of my life. <sighs> I've never had one better. So there you go. I can't really hear it inside of that sample, but the time to speech for that first chunk was now 1.4 seconds instead of half a second. So that's a little bit of the trade-off there. Um, less chunking uh, would result in an a uh, longer time to the first uh, token or the first bit or chunk of speech. So this is an area that I'm actively trying to figure out. I'm working through different types of implementations um, and different proofs of concepts um, to to try to get this going with, with GPT Sovitz. So if I make any progress on this, I will definitely be updating you guys on it. But yeah, those are going to be the updates that I talked about on a post the other day where I'm getting real time um, speech with Soviet GPT um, or GPT Soviets. And 
I think 50 for accumulation amount is going to be probably where I where I sit at. But um, yeah, I'll let you guys know if I figure out anything with this um, buffer test to see if we can buffer some of those audio frames um, to have a little bit more smooth speech or if my time is just wasted. So so we'll see. We'll see how that ends up going now. I will just talk a little bit on why I am just trying to figure this out for GPT Sovitz. Number one, um, I want to get faster text to speech output, uh, some type of real time speech, because like if you have a model that you're trying to chat with, uh, you don't want to be waiting for one or two seconds for the response to come back. So I've already test, um, tested some quantized models on my GPU and they're blazing fast. So that doesn't really matter too much. Um, because I can generate a full sentence of text in like less than a quarter of a second. And then I can just pass that into some type of text to speech model that can be read out. Um, the biggest delay or the biggest um, cost right now is just that text to speech model. And that is what this is trying to resolve. So hopefully with that, the perceived delay will be decreased. And I think that touches into a little bit on what, uh, what else that I am trying to work on. Um, I'd like to jump back into that uh, Vivi project that I was working on before, which is the AI VTuber thing, um, because I just think it's cool. So I was watching a little bit of Neurosama. If you guys know what Neurosama is, Neurosama is an AI VTuber that's taken Twitch by storm recently. And I was just watching some of um, Neurosama and Beetle and just trying to uh, piece together like what types of models are being used there and how is their delay uh, so low so the text to speech model is i don't think there i don't think Vito's text to speech model is anything too complicated it might be something um very light on the system um, i don't think he's running anything a uh, state of the art for the speech model i could be i could be corrected i haven't listened to enough neurosama samples to kind of uh guess what TTS engine it might be. Maybe it's just VITS or something even simpler. The The big thing that stood out to me is that the delay between the speech of Vito and then like the speech of Neurosama is is super small. I'm genuinely shocked you haven't just screwed the radiator in yet. I don't know why you doubt me. There's absolutely no way the GPU is going to fit. It's gonna fit. Please just screw it in properly. I physically cannot bear this much longer. Okay, wait, wait, wait. And that wouldn't be able to be achieved with any of the Texas speech models that I use at the current moment. Maybe Tortoise or maybe XTTS because XTTS is kind of the same um, autoregressive uh, workflow. So you got your autoregressive model that creates tokens and that can be streamed and then decoded. Um, so XTTS might be able to do it. However, XTTS is also prone to um, aberrations uh, for longer text and some weird sound anomalies, same as Tortoise. So I, I'm, I'm moving away from Tortoise slowly. But um, yeah, the biggest thing is that that uh, real time factor and just trying to make these uh, tools feel that they're running faster, even if they might not actually be running faster. It's just a perceived uh, speed increase. But yeah, I'm rambling on a little bit. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. That's gonna be it for today's video. Once again, I'd like to thank all the uh, members of the channel. Very much appreciate it. And um, I will see you guys later.